Good evening and welcome once again to Diggers and Dozers Live. I'm your host, uh, Mark Anthony, and together tonight with my co-host Peter Haddock, we are going to be turning our attention to all things wheel loaders. Uh, later in the show, we'll be giving you an exclusive look at a new Hyundai HL975A um, from the good folks at Hyundai. But first, we're going to take a look at a whole new series of wheel loaders that were unveiled earlier today during a very impressive uh, virtual launch that, um, hosted by Doosan. We'll get to the machines in a second, but Peter, you and I have sat through quite a lot of these virtual launches in, in recent months from the likes of JCB, Caterpillar, Liebherr, and also the Bobcat bit of the do so Bobcat organization. I would point out at this point, all of those sent us a hat, but that's a that's a whole other point. <laughs> yeah, Mark, what's all about the hats? Come on. Yeah. Do, do so, come on, pay attention. Um, but launch-wise, how did this one stack up in your opinion? Mark, it was weird. Why was it weird? Because I felt like I wasn't in my office. I felt like I was in my neighboring son's bedroom with his gaming screens on. Because it was just like, whoa, what's going on here? This is like all coming together like you would have in, you know, in a proper sort of Call of Duty style graphics and everything that I see him playing. It was nuts. And I'm like, what, what, what is going on? I mean, you, you first look in and you see a warehouse and you, you you feel like someone's going to come around the side with a with a gun and shoot you or something if you you know if you're looking at that Call of Duty. But then you this this machine starts coming together and it all sort of comes together in three D and stuff. And what it said to me was like, God, this is super super clever. And you can see all the components coming together. But what it tells me is these guys are working in three D like everybody else, but they're just working, living, breathing in 3d and, and i think you know that was just incredible and i know we're going to talk about some of the other bits and bobs there but wow wow when you get further on later on we're, we're, we're gonna see some really cool stuff you know well, i'll tell you what just to show people what it is we're talking about let's uh let's have a look at that machine assembling itself shall we oh yeah come back to you that in a second but uh nick drew the main man is in the house tonight uh peter ferguson is here with us as well Hi. justin carrigan's here as well um just while we've got nick drew in the house uh congratulations on the sixty-five thousand uh instagram followers nick yeah. that's a great achievement it certainly is mark and you know the great thing about nick is he's really talking the language of the industry he's literally there all the time i mean when i sit with nick i had lunch with him uh, before all the lockdown stuff and guy the guy didn't stop picking up his phone i almost felt like you know putting my dinner on top of it so he couldn't move it because it's just always there supporting the industry communicating with people asking questions and and you know he really does Put a lot of effort into that, so it's well deserved. That is the only way you'll stop him using his mobile phone is to put foreign food on top of it, because <laughs> as you as you know well know that would frighten the life out of him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Get, 
getting back to the show, one of the things that really struck me, and I think you've already hinted at this, was the fact that that initial launch information or the, the launch video there, that was automotive style. You know, that was the sort of thing you'd, you'd expect to see at, you know, the Swiss Motor Show or something like that. I mean, it's just incredible. And I think that really does show just how far the development of construction equipment has come in recent years, isn't it? Yeah, it has. And to me, what we really need to do, Mark, in this industry is we need to make it look cool. It needs to be something like, you know, wow, look at that. You know, I did show my son, who's 13, uh, that actual uh, image there and the video clips. And he's like, whoa, dad, that looks cool. It's even got the little digga 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 uh, that sounds a bit like, you know, it's going to be in a computer game. But we have to show people what's going and what's put into these machines. And why can't we have a car key that opens the doors? You know, I've tried to get into uh, machines before and you've got to yank the actual door to get in it. You know, why can't we have that kind of approach you know we've seen also bobcat using the, the the iphone to control their skid steers you know so do some bobcat are really looking at look this is equipment it doesn't have to be dull and it doesn't have to be difficult it should be what you're used to going into your car and that's sort of tesla led stuff really with the screens and everything else coming on although they have got obviously a push start button which is, uh, you know, uh, not quite the Tesla feature, I guess. But, um, yeah, but that's great. That's what we really need to see because these are places where people have got to spend, like, 12, hour day, uh, 12 hours a day in a shift inside that. And guess what? If you know it's got these features that are for people, the operators, the people that are going to sit in there, then wouldn't an operator more likely go and say, hey, boss, get us one of those Doosans, would you? Because it looks awesome. Absolutely. And I, I, it also harkens back to something that you and I touch on on a fairly regular basis, this idea of, of encouraging young people. I mean, you just mentioned your son at 13. You know, would, does he want to drive something with grotty old levers and a, you know, a bench for a seat? Or does he want to be in the, the Tesla lookalike with all the bells and whistles? Well, I think I know which way, what, which way my kids would have gone back in the day. Absolutely. You know, and I think what's really important about these things is the, the industry is growing up. And it's great to see now that we are getting into a, a stage where we can really give people an all-round feel from being immersed into a machine like this. So you can really sense what it's like to operate. You know, and, and later on with, with, with the sort of vid videos that they put into this, which are, I know we're going to come on to. They've even done simple things, you know, with, with buckets and stuff to give you that reality and this is virtual reality coming into reality in the way in which these things interact. And, you know, and it's done in such a clever high end way that sometimes if you just look at some of the clips, you think, is that, is that a real machine or is that a virtual machine? It fooled me a little bit there. No, dead right. We've we've had a comment here, and I, I I must admit I didn't ask the question today, but I'm assuming that that, that um, remote control key. I, I'm assuming that is unique to each machine. I I, yeah, I would we, sincerely hope so. You know, we'd have to ask Dusan that because you know, of course, you know, we've got all sorts of things right now, Mark. We've got security; it's a really big issue. You know, we we had the olden days where you could buy a key on eBay that would fit. The, the machine and just go walk into a machine with a key and off you go. But, you know, things have improved. But like anything, you know, security systems, whether it's cyber security systems, someone hacking into, uh, you know, a, a machine or whether it's uh, these sort of systems there with, with keys and, uh, and radio frequency, you know, you've always got to look at that. And, and that's something we can't understand right now but it certainly would be a nice question for someone for Doosan to come on and uh, and give us that information it's certainly something what would be nice for us to to put that information uh, at the bottom of this so when people are seeing uh, this that's not so live then uh, you know we can get that question answered absolutely i'm not seeing anyone from Doosan in the chat at the moment but if they do turn up we'd love to to hear on that now obviously that we, we've seen the launch today and it, it was from what I can gather, it's a staggered launch. So we've got a, an initial seven models right up to a 6.4 cubic meter class DL580-7. But there's four more models to come. So they're not even finished yet. Well, I think, you know, what really strikes you about when they all come in like that 
is this is all, this is a new family, a new family, and they're saying what's changed within their piece. Well, guess what? The family's changed. The family's grown up. The family has had a makeover, you know. And I think yeah, it's really important for people to get these units out there so that you know get that initial model out there so that people can see the vision so that they know how so they can plan uh, with Doosan as to as to what they can expect you know and and we've seen it from other manufacturers that they they bring in a next generation machine show that machine and and show what we would have as a landscape in front of us um, throughout the year to see how that machine, how that concept, how that generation, how that technology, how that usability, comfort, maintenance is all going to then flow through on different models. And you know, it's critical that people show that pathway because people are going to buy these machines and they're going to, what, three, four years they're going to keep them for. So, you know, if you're in that space deciding right now what to invest in, and a lot of people are, Mark, We've got HS2, it's going to need a lot of wheel loaders. We've got all, all sorts of different projects that are going to need uh, wheel loaders of this type in all sorts of different applications. And the people are making those decisions right now to look at purchasing. And so it's 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 a, the right thing to do. You just mentioned the expression sharing their vision. Let's share their vision. Let's have a look at these machines actually doing what it is they're paid to do. Look, I realise that a, a well-produced video and lashings of CGI proves nothing, and, and obviously that was shot to show the machines in their best light, but they really do look the part, don't they? You know I, you know what I really liked? I really, really liked the fact that the bucket was scratched. You know, it's a crazy thing, really. I really like the fact that they'd gone, well, look, we're going into a load of rocks here. And, you know, of course, the bucket is not going to look immaculate as it would do, you know, in a showroom. So I think that that's really clever. They've thought about the details of that. And I think, you know, what really makes me um, feel that, that they've gone to that, that thought process is that the, what they're showing there is actually how the machine is working. So there's a, a number of different features that you've got there. First of all, what is great to see is them linking that with obviously their ADT product as well. But what you've you've got is the ability to show this sort of articulation and, and to show the way in which that machine can physically work. So you know that is is really important because we need to understand some of those key features. But but seeing it in context of that actually working in what we what looks and feels like a real sort of quarry mining style environment is really important. I and mean, I think, you know, showing those certain features and, and the, the sense of the visibility for me 
is just like right because we know the and we're going to come on to some more of those features but we know that the most important thing for a wheel loader is is particularly the big ones is to be able to have that visibility uh, and that capability for the operators so you know i really think that you know that there are some features in that 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 are going to be really interesting to to dig deeper in uh, as we say because i think you know we need to understand how some of those the, the, those elements will work and will prove to add to the efficiency because the articulation if you know if you can get closer to the machine to the ADT and and do less work you, you, you've got less tire wear and and you've got um, the increased ability to fill those ADT so you can move more material throughout a day and throughout a shift pattern it's interesting that you picked up on the scratched bucket because it, th there was a moment during the, the launch, which we'll come on to in a second, where I actually thought maybe I'd been sniffing some marker pens or something because somebody referred to a transparent bucket. Um, so I immediately thought I, I've misheard that. Yeah. turns out the bucket is still made of steel, as you've already seen, and not glass as I first feared. But before we, we talk about it, uh, let, let's just show what that looks like because – this is some truly remarkable technology right here. Let's have a look. Yeah. Now, Peter, you get to speak to a lot of equipment operators on your travels. That really looks like it ticks all the boxes for comfort, ease of maintenance, and, as we've already mentioned, a transparent bucket. 
Right, the first thing I want to say, though, Mark, is you always get these mavericks when they put these sort of 3D things together. Um, I just had to laugh when I saw the lizard. Uh, because, <laughs> because you've got it. The, the guys back in the studio, they've put in so much time to this video. have gone, right, I bet you we can fit a lizard in and nobody will really notice. I'll notice that lizard, everybody. Uh, that's, a, that's a moment of fun from the guys actually doing it and fair play to them. But, yeah, right. Let's get a bit more serious now. You know, transparent bucket. Okay, it sounds ludicrous, sounds ridiculous, but what a clever, clever thing to do. You know, that's really thinking outside the box. I mean, well, actually, probably thinking outside the bucket, Mark, um, in the cab, because, wow, you can use camera technology to do that. You can actually see how you're going into a pile in front of you, and therefore you can optimize how you go into a pile. Again, operators, you know, they've got that knowledge and you can actually see how it can really, really work very well. And I, I just think that's just so clever. It's just taking, again, the cars, you know, and their visibility and the new technologies and going, how can we put that into there? And that, for me, stand out. You know, obviously we've got uh, I call these standard things now, telemetry and optimized performance and this, that, and the other, you know. And, and I think the touch screens uh, uh, enable that dashboard to be a lot clearer, a lot more spacious, more, more visibility, which is absolutely fantastic. And also, you know, what, heist, what really stood out for me from an operator's perspective, Mark, is it's got an inbuilt air compressor air gun for cleaning. That's is clever why is that clever because that is really thinking about how do you look after these machines and the maintenance of these machines really really quickly and effectively without having somebody to get you know the shovel out the broom out the whatever else out the closet to actually clean up the machine so having that integrated into the machine allows people to go right I'm just going to stop and I'm just going to do uh, this little bit of maintenance. And there's a lot of operators I know, Mark, that are really proud of the way they keep their machines. And I know they would see that as a clever little add-on for them that's actually going to save them a lot of time at the end of a shift, making sure that machine's ready either for the next person to come into another shift after them or for them the next morning, you know. Uh, and in all kind of weather conditions as well, you know, because, again, a lot of the problems that people have um, when uh, in the industry is slips, trips and falls. And that uh, is access and egress um, onto a machine. So you can imagine using that high pressure uh, air to actually make it a safer machine to get on and off for that operator. So, again, little touches but these are the things that are important to the operators. And these are the things that are actually important from a safety perspective to the people that are running the site um, in general. So thinking about it, that those sort of things were stand out for me and, and you know, uh, fair play for them for the lizard as well. Well, as you can see on the comments here, you're not the only person that spotted it. <laughs> uh, but, but I'll tell you what is interesting. One of the things that always – amuses and, and entertains me with these live streams is the fact that it, it starts a, a conversation that you and I never intended to have. Yeah. Um, and the conversation that's been going on here um, is, do you not think the lack of customer contact from manufacturers asking what the owner operator likes or dislikes is something that needs to be addressed? Now, I know in your previous life, you did a lot of work with Caterpillar and Caterpillar do a lot of sort of field follow work. And I know JCB do a very, very similar thing. But he goes on to say, uh, I've never been asked or even known of anyone that has. Um, surely guessing what people want is missing an opportunity to nail it. I think that's a good point. And just reiterating our point, there's a, a bit of feedback there that says they, they were asked once for feedback on a cat telehandler. Right. It, it is, I think it's a valid point. But the, the more that you look at some of these machines, you know, the, the machines that we've just seen there, that's not been dreamt up on a drawing board. You know, somebody has actually done their homework there. And and, and like you say, things like, you know, the, the high pressure uh, air air thing there, that's got to have come from an operator. That's not just come from a, a wizard with a, a laptop, has it? No, I think, I think look, look, let's understand how this is being delivered better now. Um, you have got 3D design 
So you've got the ability, like we've just had, to be taken into the machine, to be around the machine, and to actually see how it physically operates. So how does that door open? Where is that screen mounted? Where is the operator situated within the space? So you can have, with virtual reality and, and design, you can now put people with the goggles, with uh, whatever, inside the machine. And why is that important? Because operators are all shapes and sizes, working in all different types of conditions and all different environments throughout the world and also throughout seasons that you go through. And so having this ability to bring people in in that virtual context in the early stages of design, which I know is happening more and more now, is, is a real game changer. And, you know, people are out there. I know, Look, the, these manufacturers, I know, you know, Caterpillar, you've mentioned before, these manufacturers spend an awful lot of time talking to people and, and, and bringing people in and doing the secret squirrel on site. And, of course, it's not so secret squirrel anymore uh, when you've got uh, groups like the Digger Man blog group going, hey, just seen this brand new uh, machine, next generation machine on site, and boof, the, the game's given away. It used to be that you could hide these things, but uh, no longer everyone's got a smartphone, um, which is good fun anyway. But, um, but I think people will um, recognize that a lot of work is now done in this area. And, you know, if they want to get involved, it, you know, and they are somebody that feels that they've got something to to, to give to that sort of design and, and things like that. Well, you know, that's another opportunity for us, Mark, to, to give people a voice for that uh, element. You know, and as we move into 2021, I think one of the things we are looking at is how we can assist the operator to reach the manufacturer with the questions that they want to to ask them, you know, because we're going to be sending all of these questions to Doosan, to the next person, the Bobcats and whatever we've done. And, and you know, those people, those manufacturers want that feedback, you know, uh, and we, we've got the ability to pull that together and, to, and to, to help get that through. And I think that's really important. And this is why it's so important for the people that have been on Facebook there to say, what about this? What about the other? Because, you know, we want to have a conversation that's based on what you need to know. Otherwise, what's the point in us being here in the first place? No, you're absolutely right. It's interesting that you picked up there on on the uh, in cab displays as well. And one of the things that that you know I've I've been writing about plant for the last thirty odd years, and you know you you've seen the the external design of machines refined to improve visibility, particularly you know with a wheel loader, forward visibility over the edges of the bucket and that kind of thing. And yet, in the last five six years, with the development of all these add-on systems you know telematics and in-cab monitoring and all that i mean I, I was astounded some of the machines i saw at, at con expo for example you know you've got a clear line of sight but in front of that clear line of sight you've got this bank of of screens whereas i, I do think you know hats off to, to do so that certainly wasn't the case here that did all look like it was neatly tucked away yeah i call it cab clutter mark you know uh, and i think you know that cab clutter has been an issue um, but it's an, actually, again, it's an issue that is being tackled because what we've got is we've got people like like a Geosystems building in things into their tablet so there doesn't have to be another tablet. We've got things like audible alerts so you can take away a screen. We've got things like visible light-based alert systems so they can take another role. But we've also got the ability to look at the future where we are now. And these are the things I'm talking about right now. In fact, I was writing some stuff this morning about semi-automatic systems and semi, uh, which leads to sort of the road to autonomy, which actually takes away a lot of the actions and, uh, and allows the operator to focus on the actual job at hand and look outside of the screen. And this particular operator I'm writing about um, called Chris, he uses a chime-based system because it tells him he's getting d -d 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 quite close to the level in which he's got to then start grading and using the screen and the technology to do that. So I think we see we have seen that clutter. We're now seeing the declutter. Um, so, you know, uh, personal alert devices built into the Leica Geosystems tablet, for example, which means that you can put those on helmets of 
of people and, uh, that are maybe around the job site. So those are the things I know about. We've also got a you know a lot more coming through, and all of it is aimed at making the job site a safer place to be. Yes, more productivity and efficiency, but everybody, including the main contractor I spoke to for this article, um, is safety first. Why? Because people's lives matter. We all need to go home. And also, if you get it wrong, it's shutdown time, you know, and, and the whole job stop, stops. So this is filtering through. It's filtering through into design and integration. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of technology now factory fitted um, uh, when it comes to things like machine control um, as well. So it's all integrated uh, much more within the, the whole design fabric. And, I mean, for, for that, uh, we saw uh, Caterpillar's D5 with the with their screen in front of it and the Trimble system that that uh, is, is is factory fitted with right underneath, completely designed into the into the fabric of the operator station. Um, it, it appears that the, uh, the the Diggers and Dozers live confessional is open because um, oh. our friend has just been back. Uh, oh. Saying I've never been contacted, actually a lie. Enkong have always asked for feedback. Great company. Well, I. Yeah. Totally agree. If anyone from Encon is, is watching, you've just been validated in public. Um, and we'd like an Encon hat as well. What I thought yeah. I'd come to mention it. You know, I know the guys at Encon, Mark, and they have built their their whole business model around the operator. And, you know, the, it's no surprise that we've just had that comment in there because, you know, Encon uh, tilt rotators are becoming much more mainstream now. Uh, in fact, again, what I was writing about, it was an automatic system linked to it, uh, not an NCON, but another tilt rotator manufacturer's uh, uh, device. Uh, but what they've done is they've gone out there and said, this is for experienced operators. This is for the operator community. This is why we're designing it. Tell us why um, why it's good and bad and ugly, and, and we'll do something about it. Absolutely. Now, way, way back at the start of the show, I mentioned the fact that we were going to give you an exclusive look at the HL975A wheel loader from Hyundai. I wish they'd call them things like Derek or something like that. I just can't, I can't cope. Wheel loader, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, your, your memory, because you're way younger than I am, your memory is way better than mine. I'm fairly sure that this, this machine was actually on display uh, at Connexpo back in March, but I, I couldn't find any photographs of it in my uh, camera roll. Um, but that might explain why there's been a bit less fanfare about that. But yeah. it has just been launched in here in Europe, and it does compete with one of the new Doosans, the, uh, the DL480-7. So it seems a, a pretty good time to uh, take a closer look. Uh, there is a much longer version of this video on uh, the Hyundai YouTube channel, um, but in the interest of time, and because, frankly, I know you've all got homes to go to, we've done a bit of judicious editing. So before we talk about it, let's take a look at the new Hyundai, and then we'll be back with Peter to explain what it's all about.
It's a really strange thing, isn't it? You wait months for a, for a new wheel loader to come along, and then a dozen come along all at once. Well, what did you make of that one, Peter? Well, you know, right. So first of all, the big thing about that is the CVT which is continuous variable transmission. Now, I don't purport to be an expert on this, but I have talked to an expert on this, Graham Black, the editor of Earth Movers magazine that I uh, also contribute to. And Graham has said, why are we not having more CVT dry, uh, CVT machines um, in the industry? Because it's been in the agricultural sector for a long time. Now, What's really, really important about this is the fact that there's huge, huge fuel savings to be made uh, using a CVT in the, uh, on this machine. They're saying 30% fuel savings on that. And so let me explain, in their words, uh, not mine, um, how this is put together. So what they're saying is it continually changes the ratios between hydraulic to mechanical energy. So depending on load and speed to keep the energy at a low RPM range and offer a smooth, seamless acceleration. Uh, so during deceleration, the CVT acts as a brake, reducing wear on the service brake and prolonging life of the axle oil. And mark it, that's what, with the Cummings engine uh, inside it, uh, it delivers the 30% fuel saving. Now, it's really important that people look at CVT and look at what that offers and actually understand the difference between that and the other things on the market. Now, in order to do that, obviously, you've got to go and be able to, to try these machines and you've got to be able to try them in the context of the applications in which they actually uh, will perform best in. And I think you know that's what we're missing right now, the ability for people to go um, to a quarry and, and, and try it out for themselves and things. But, you know, we've got a show coming up uh, where hopefully we're going to be able to see some of these machines in action, Hillhead, uh, next year. And I'm looking forward to going and actually reporting on these and talking to the experts on the larger equipment because, we you know, that we've missed that. We've missed that. And, and obviously quarries uh, that might be be testing uh, these machines or having these machines are quite rightly locking themselves down um, to to make sure that they're concentrating on delivering their outputs right now because and that's sensible. But we really do need to see these machines in action. And the other things that I really wanted to to, to highlight, Mark, in, in in reading into this machine is is again it's the this advanced all round view monitoring which you know, 360 cameras to you and me, um, uh, but there's an intelligence moving object detection, um, iMod, uh, that they call it, um, that, that they've also got, um, which again is really important when we get to safety because we want to be able to see very quickly all of the things that are around us and understand where they are within the job site so that we can either stop or we feel that we can move forward or backwards safely, you know, and uh, it's it's an option, Mark. So, you know, you can have this new this other option, but they have got an option of a radar system. Now, if you can think about the applications where big wheel loaders are used, it is quarrying, it's mining, it's applications like waste, where you can be working in, in very dark environments and you're working in shift environments as well. So having that sort of radar system which detects obstacles and, and, and machine day and night with sort of no blind spots um, really does, again, enhance the machine. And you'll notice, I'm not about the CVT, I'm not really talking about the other elements of the machine because, again, we're going to take these things for granted now that the performance is there, the environmental elements are there, that they've got... Uh, all these other bits right and the servicing and things. But, you know, it's safety, which is so important. So you've got audible and visible alert functions coming into this machine as well. And, you know, emergency stop switches, you know, simple thing, boom, you know, there we go. Um, but you might have seen and, and noticed, and I, I guess the viewers can't really see it, but actually the, the um, operator there just put his finger along a screen. Now, that's really quite cool because that is basically – uh, a traction control mode that you can change by just putting your finger up and down, you know, on a touch screen, which is great. And it's also got this mode called the creep 
mode. And again, that's taking it from the likes of electric cars, you know, who have also got creep modes where you can move quite slowly, but you're not going from a standing start. So again, these sort of creep modes, you can move right quite slowly until you're ready to get to the machine. But what you're not doing is stopping, starting again, and using that energy uh, to, to create that stop-start momentum. A creep's a nice, a nice way of keeping moving, but also making sure that you're not maybe bogged down in, you know, some of these difficult environments we see ourselves in, um, you know, particularly as it's been raining and raining and raining in the UK recently. And and then, of course, you know, you've got things like uh, payload. But, my mate, the one thing that I loved, I loved, I've got to say, again, it's a bit like a lizard moment for me. One thing I loved was hi, mate. And I'm not just saying hi, mate, because you're my mate and I'm saying hi. <laughs> Hi, mate, is actually a thing with Hyundai. It's basically, and I love it. I love the way they've branded it. It's a remote fleet management system. <laughs> but it's like, hi, mate, I'm stuck. You know, um, or hi, mate, you're going to have to stop your machine so soon because we've got an engine fault that the machine's telling us back at base. So, hi, mate, you've got a problem, but don't worry, we're coming to fix it. And it's like, oh, what a great way of talking to your operators and your customers. So I'm loving another little moment there of, of a hi, mate moment. And uh, that's that's probably my highlight uh, of discovery when I was looking into this earlier today. So Your yeah. hi, mate highlight. <laughs> what, what, funny enough, the, the bit that stood out for me, and I, you know, I realise this is not peculiar to, to Hyundai, but the uh, the electronic control for their uh, eco mode. Earlier in the year, when the lockdown first started, I interviewed somebody from uh, Volvo, and they were talking about what they referred to as the gamification of control. And that idea that the operator can say, okay, well, t yesterday I used 60 litres of fuel. Yep. Can I do it in 59 this t today? Can yeah. I do it in 58 tomorrow? And, you know, and, and all of that, you know, almost making them compete with themselves as much as you would on a, on a computer game, hence the gamification. You know, that, even that, it's a tiny, tiny thing, but it's another step forward, isn't it? Well, you know, what's interesting about that, Mark, because obviously you know I worked um, with the Caterpillar dealer Finning for 14 years, and we've seen um, that information come into uh, the way in which Finning support uh, their, their customers, particularly in quarries, to, to look at fuel usage, to look at payload monitoring, to look at all of that productivity life cycle, the, the job site solutions that Caterpillar call it. Uh, and that information has been available on dashboards and things like that for some time in those applications. But when you see machines coming through where it's showing you that information, and you can probably get it on an app and it's automatically sending that <clears throat> potentially to your mate's you know, through WhatsApp screenshots and stuff like that going, ha come on. But what I like about that idea of gamification is, let's think about how games work, Mark. Right, so again, I can only learn this now. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a father of a son that plays computer games. He works with his mates to earn money for it in his computer game um, by doing tasks and doing them better and doing them well together as a team. Well, isn't that what we want the industry to do? Isn't that what we want operators to do, to work as a team, to work together for, for, for the better of them all? And for me, if I'm, a, if I'm somebody looking into this gamification space and, a, and looking to attract young people into the industry, and boy, oh boy, quarries and, and waste and things like that really do have a problem with that. Um, I'm going to look at saying, well, actually, can I use this gamification culture? Can I use the understanding here to actually reward the people and to actually say to somebody, guess what, guys? You can get paid more this week because you've all done this. And, and, and we've saved in fuel. And if you're saving, if you're improving productivity by 1% uh, um, um, per machine, you are saving thousands and thousands and even tens of thousands of pounds over a year well why not give some of that back to the operators as an incentive because you won't just get one percent you might get two percent or you might get 1.1 percent and still that's thousands and thousands of pounds isn't it and what it's doing is it's saving the environment at the same time so it's saying could we pay you more could we also reduce fuel, reduce our carbon impact? And could we also then appeal to those young people that are more conscious than we are about the environment? Because 
They're recognizing that we need to be better, like we know, Mark, better with the environment. We need to do things more efficiently, not just to make more money, but to make it better for the environment if we are having to extract things like aggregates out of quarries. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you picked up on that because the, the lady that I spoke to at Volvo was very keen to point out that their approach was very much carrot rather than stick. It's not you're using too much fuel. It's you've used less fuel. Well done. Here's some kind of reward for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that that is we just got to think about that. There's going to be some clever people out there that are really going to go, I'm going to use that, you know, and then that's going to be all over social media and then everybody's going to use it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, when you look at what's, what's happening in, in things like fitness, I mean, you've mentioned computer games, but fitness, you know, and my son runs a David Lloyd club and, you know, they're all logged on to it. You know, how many miles did you do this week? Well, I did 10 more than you. You know, it, it makes it competitive and people just work that bit harder for it, don't they? And, you know, the government wants us to increase productivity. It's been at historic lows. And I think, you know, the way in which you do that is you look at what people want to do and how they want to operate in the real world. And you go, well, I'm going to be better than, than that person. I'm not saying you've got to have competition but for the, for in that sense, but you can work with people. And then, you know, you've got really good people that have got a lot of experience. Well, if they can come and start working in that way as mentors and go, well, come on, you did really well here. Come on, you can just do that. Can we, you know, together, let's work and let's become this team. You know, then, then that, togetherness is going to actually deliver way more i mean a good operator actually making incremental gains is great don't get me wrong a bad operator no i'll say bad operator no that's wrong i apologize for that an operator that has basically just say just started an operator has just started their journey uh, and is learning and needs to be mentored well their incremental gains can be vast in comparison you know so you can get the two to three to four to five percent out of that person where the good operator might might not even be able to be better you know um so that that's really where we need to think about you know we're going off at a slight tangent here i'm going to say hello to ken hatcher because ken's just turned up um one of the things that that, that struck me with this i mean obviously we, we went to Connexpo and you were very closely linked to the uh, caterpillar operator challenge there oh, and obviously yeah. that that's done on on a series of set challenges but imagine that with for example, you know, the, the Hyundai wheel loader brigade, you know, we have the telematics to, to monitor how many hours they're doing, how much fuel they're using. You know, that there is a there is a global game to be had there, should somebody so desire, isn't there? I've always said, to, said Mark, you could have league tables. You know what I mean? I, I, the, the thing about that, uh, you know, for, for fun, you know, obviously, but the thing about that is what you've got to recognise is you've got to somehow factor in um, the fact that people are working in different environments, they're working in, you know, uh, you know, it's it's peeing it down with rain, I didn't even turn the machine on because it would just get bogged down. But, you know, there's a way in which you can do that and, and you can have fun with it, I think. And, you know, and I do see that the, the impact for me of the Global Operator Challenge was absolutely massive. And, and it was an amazing show that Caterpillar put on. It was, I mean, they had, you know, they had, USA big 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 influencers with huge followings you know actually you know, hosting it so it was like it was super super cool you know I everybody wanted to be there everybody wanted to be involved with it because it became a, a show within its own right you know and it became something you know I think it was something like somebody posted a picture one of these guys posted the picture it reached a half a million people in 10 hours you know, and I mean, that's how excited people were to see this stuff happening. So definitely uh, room there, definitely room. I, I tell you what is an interesting point here. Um, that Somebody has just made a point here. Um, as wheel loaders are featuring here, no one or no plant manager ever got sacked for buying a Volvo or a cat. Has that expression lost its meaning with the rise of Doosan and Hyundai? Now, you know, Peter and I are both fiercely independent. You know, we're not on the payroll of Hyundai or Doosan or Caterpillar or Volvo or anyone else. But you do sense there is a leveling of the play, playing field now, don't you? You know, experience I, counts for a lot and everything else. But, you know, when you look at some of the, the, the cutting edge tech that we're seeing here, you know, this applies across the board now, doesn't it? I think, you know, you, you're looking at, I mean, it's like cars. 
you know, let, let's look at, you know, it's like cars. There's there's very little difference between some of the cars now, you know, and, and, and I think you, you've got to realise that this is healthy competition. What we need in the industry is healthy competition from people that can supply not just the machine, but also uh, recognise that they need to supply the backup and support to the customers to keep those machines running. And, you know, I'll come back to high mate because high mate is part and parcel of that. You need to recognize that if I buy a machine and it's the best in the world, but it breaks down and nobody can fix it in time, I should have, you know, I should have bought another machine because, you know, I need that support. So we're getting to a stage where, you know, some of the actual times for people to do servicing are, are, are raising up you know the cvt is going to have less wear so the maintenance schedules are raising up so you're, you're seeing that there's a lot going that way like you said uh, within the space and i think the tech what what is really important is how we get the information from machines into uh, the actual uh, standardized format that people can use so you know people don't in this country necessarily run you know medium or large site wheel loaders and just have a set brand you know people pick different brands and also mark you've got to realize at the moment you know it's around availability because availability is an issue because factories have been shut down during this lockdown period so you might find that people are choosing to buy different brands as well because of availability. And then obviously it's up to that brand to see how well their machine performs against what would have been uh, a different, you know, go-to brand in the past. And, you know, so it, it's all out there, you know, and, and I think everybody's going to benefit from it really. But, you know, it's cool to be able to talk about that, that there's loads of different stuff happening, you know. Um, but I, I'm not a purchaser. I'm not somebody that understands um, how the support – that, that, that people get from different brands varies. And I think it is, you know, um, uh, really important that, that you get a machine uh, and you get the support there uh, that's relevant for you uh, wherever you are in the UK. Your point about trying different brands, I think, is is really, really valid. I, I, I spend a lot of my time, as, as you will know, Peter, writing about demolition, demolition equipment. And you look back a few years, you know, and, and you know, the whole world were looking at Lugong Askance, you know, with, Chinese excavator in demolition. I don't think so. And one or two tried it, and one or two became 10 or 12, and yeah. then that 10 or 12 all became repeat customers. And all of a sudden, Lu Gong is a credible choice for a demolition excavator these days. You know, going back to, to our friend's point there about, you know, people trying a, a Doosan or a Hyundai, you've got to say, you know, they may, and they may not go back again either. Well, it's like anything, Mark. You know, you know, I'm... I'm... <laughs> It's about, you know, you know, when people used to say the Friday afternoon car, you know, so you get a Friday afternoon car and basically you just got nothing but problems with the Friday afternoon car. You know, it might not have been built in a Friday afternoon. It's a, it's a running joke and um, sort of want to get home in a Friday afternoon. But, um, you know, if a brand lets you down, then, you know, there's every reason to look elsewhere because, you know, a brand letting you down when you've been a, a loyal customer for, for, for a long period of time it is wrong uh, you know and so i think you just you'll just find that people you know as we come out of this sort of period and as we hope um, that 2021 will allow us to all get back down uh, together again and on site you'd like to think that people will will want to just jump in a whole range of different machines just to try them out and to see what the what all the fuss is about because nobody's been able to do that and that's why we're on today you know, chatting about these things because there are exciting products coming out there. And, you know, hopefully in 2021, people are going to be able to get their hands on them, you know. And it, like I said before, really hope to be able to see these things in action at Hillhead um, 2021 and, and report live from there on people's experiences and on, on operators' experiences that might be able to, to get behind the wheel um, and some of the demonstration to actually talk about what, is this thing how is it different to the other other uh, other model that that particular brand had beforehand so you know this it's going to be exciting times mate ahead and and also i mean your point about service you know obviously you know we, we don't want machines letting people down we don't want service departments letting people down but in the in the age of social media 
you really don't want that as a manufacturer because you know what one one failed appointment or one failed machine and that's gone like wildfire hasn't it yeah and i think you know it, it, like i mean at the moment you know again we're, we're in unprecedented times but i think you know uh just in general terms you know, we we know that you've got to build products that, that work and you've got to build products that you know how to look after. And this is why I love all the telemetry and the technology, because what I want to see and what projects like HS2 and Highways England projects are talking about right now, Mark, is is basically um, getting a phone call that the, 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 the guy has uh, or, or, or the girl has fixed on the machine before people knew that there was a problem with the machine and it's like uh, that's crazy so preventative maintenance is the future and if these machines can talk to us and if we can get uh, operators to understand that, that there are some issues as well and and talk to to um via the things like inspect apps and stuff like that directly to the support people then you can actually have a real benefit in in the uptime that that will deliver, you know, and and we need, you know, we need more and more people in the industry, and and you know, we've got to train these people, we've got to train them on all this new technology, we've also got to train them on electrification, you know, we gosh, we need a lot of people in this industry uh, to come through, Mark, because it's exciting times ahead, and you know, the 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 person that used to to fix things now has to be not just an expert in mechanics, but electric. Uh, electrics and technology you know to understand how to fix that and we and we need far more of them than we could ever imagine right now mark you're absolutely right now I, I, we've been talking or I probably should say you've been talking for almost an hour now so um well i, I am going to start to draw a line in the sand in a second a um, couple of things uh, for people that watch regularly uh, you'll know that uh, kenneth hatcher knows everything about everything Tonight, we should ask him a question because he arrived late and he didn't even know what the show was about. So um, thanks for watching, Ken. But I, I, I kind of regret not having a, a, something ready to ask you there. And we, we, we tend to be led by we, we're led by events on this show, but we're also led by um, by the audience as well. And, and I think this could be the shaping of a future show tilt rotators sticking my neck out and say biggest game changing money time money making time saver ever. You've already mentioned the fact that, you know, that we've mentioned Encon, but, you know, Steel Wrist and Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. It seems like they have really caught on, you know, that the Scandinavians have been using for the years. And it's like the UK just woke up and said, yes, we'll have some of that. I think that could be a subject for a future show. Oh, yeah, most definitely, Mark. And I think the biggest thing that your, uh, well, your our guest there has um, basically said is uh, there is a new element coming into the tilt rotator to piece now and that is semi-automatics you put together the cabelco that plant force uh yeah go onto my youtube channel content with media and you'll see uh me an interview with an operator called chris he's got a cabelco uh sk2 uh 210 and he's got a tilt rotator for smp on it um and he's got the Leica Geo Systems automatic system that's out helping to deliver a 3D model to that machine, helping that operator to do automatic digging of trenches where they haven't got the visibility from the depth of that trench. That combination is just to die for, you know, and it is a huge fuel saving, huge time saving, hugely accurate. And obviously, you know, things like track wear are reduced dramatically because it's the tilt rotator that's doing the movement, not the tracks. So, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Oh, and Nick Drew, go on to the Diggerman blog. There you go. Nick Drew's featured that on his blog today. So uh, if you're a, a follower, Nick Drew there, and uh, Earth Movers Diggerman blog, go to earthmovers.co.uk uh, and look at Nick's blog, and there it is. So thanks, Nick. Perfect time. Perfect timing. Yeah. Now, I, I mentioned earlier the fact that uh, Nick has just got his 65,000th follower on Instagram. Uh, our Diggers and Dozers channel topped 250,000 just a few days ago. Ooh. And I've, I've been really keeping my fingers crossed because my channel, the, the Demolition News one, is 12 short of 125,000. And oh. I was really, really hoping that it would tick over while the show was going on. And it hasn't. But by, to by tomorrow, I'm sure it will have done. Um, 
we, we, we've started to go off at a tangent now, so I'm going to start to wrap things up. Uh, I think that wraps up our wheel loader um, discussions anyway, even though we ended up talking about tilt rotators and just about everything else. Um, I think that probably wraps up this show, and it probably wraps up the show for this year as well. Uh, it seems highly unlikely that anyone's going to launch anything really notable this side of Christmas. But in case you're wondering what, what's going to happen to us, I'm, I'm not going to put um, Peter away in, in mothballs. Um, we will be back uh, this time next week with a Just for Fun show, actually, that we're calling the Big Fat Plant Quiz of 2020. See, he's, ex show. he's excited already. That relates to, to how I've put on a huge amount of weight during the COVID period, mate. So uh, th there you go. That's why I'm a guest on that show, which I'm <laughs> hoping to get. Uh, somebody to offer their uh, their skills as a personal trainer in the new year. But anyway, but no, that's going to be fun. You know, it's a great way to end the year. We're going to be doing some really good, fun stuff. Uh, and Kenneth Hatcher, um, get yourself ready. Get your get your pencil sharpened for all of those answers because the quiz is coming. And I think for me, um, it's a great way to end the year. You know, we've been here doing lives. Mark, you did. So you've done tons of lives all the way through the lockdown period. We've been here to, to bring the news to people. We're, it's going to be smashing it out in 2021 as well and having these discussions and, and, and tangents all over the place. And, uh, you know, we're going to be doing the big fat quiz. So join us. Yeah, as, as Peter rightly says, um, the, the, as it stands at the moment, there won't be any prizes. I think Peter may have something possibly up his sleeve. Um, so you'll just be playing for glory really um but all of the questions as peter rightly said will relate to the construction equipment sector over the past year so i strongly recommend that you revisit diggersanddozers.com um go and check out peter's youtube channel and his podcast check out nick drew's digger man blog between now and 6 30 on the 16th of december because most of the questions will be drawn from those locations and therefore most of the answers will come from there too so uh, time to do a bit of homework Peter, before before we sign off officially, so to speak, any final thoughts on a year that I think a lot of us will be <laughs> desperately keen to forget? Um, yeah, I think for me, it's a year where things have changed so dramatically that it's never going to be the same again. You know, when you look at it, and, and you know me, I'm somebody that's hugely, hugely positive. You know, it's been difficult for everybody, you know, but... Uh, we've switched around. We've talked to each other virtually daily, Mark and myself and Nick, you know, to support each other through this time professionally as well as friends. And I think it's really important and uh, to recognise the hard work that everybody has put into this industry and, you know, to the challenges that a lot of people have faced, but really to look forward and go, look, there's a really exciting 2021 coming. We've got things moving we've got new shows new formats where we're actually talking to real people out there and 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 this is you know reflected in the time that where are we we're, we're 7 33 at night and i'm still buzzing talking to everybody having done this show uh, and getting involved in the industry for the industry and i think you know if anything uh, the, the the world has changed you know i've certainly seen uh, you know, I, as you know, I'm I'm more active. My channel's LinkedIn, Peter Haddock on LinkedIn. Um, so that basically has exploded for me from sort of, you know, you've talked about huge figures with Instagram, uh, which are amazing. But, you know, I started my business in July 2019 with 800 connections on LinkedIn, and I've now got close to 11,000. And that's changed uh, the conversations I'm having and I'm able to have because I'm connected to more people. So it's great. And, you know, and we've got people like Nick working with us, you know, and and uh, it's it's looking good, folks. So please, you know, have a great Christmas. Look after yourselves and your families and hopefully you'll be able to spend time with them. But come out fighting in 2021 because there's a lot to fight for in this industry. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work we need to do to attract people into it and to look after them when they come into this industry. And we need to, to make sure that we're setting ourselves up to be a positive, forward-thinking, you know, in this case, technology wheel-loader-driven uh, industry for, for 2021. 
I, I totally agree with that. And uh, one thing I will add to that, I, I, I mentioned earlier the fact that I've been a, a plant journalist for 30 odd years. And in the past, one of the things that I was always taught and, and was desperately keen to do was to keep stories to myself. You know, we had to get the scoop. We had to keep things to ourselves, which is, is fine for your ego. And it, it proves to you that you know things. But how is that serving your reader? How is that serving your listener or your your viewer or whatever format the audience takes? As far as I'm concerned, the very fact that that Nick Drew has got 65,000 followers on Instagram, that is fantastic news because yeah. that's 65,000 people more that are learning about what's going on in the industry. You know, we, we, between, between the four of us, we can deliver that stuff to half a million people around the world. That's got to be a good thing. It's not a case of, well, this story is mine. I'm going to keep it to myself and not tell anyone. Let's tell the world. Let's shout from the rooftops just how great construction is, how great construction equipment is, and, and the, the power of collaboration. It's got me through a, a funny old year. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to the new year based on that that context, you know. And I think, Mark, when you join together, when you collaborate, and that's what lots of people have been doing in the industry, collaborating to, to keep going and keep being safe. We're collaborating because we want to get the positive, important, ex sexy, exciting news out there, the high mate moments and the lizards uh, uh, to boot because – We've got to have fun, people, as well. We've got to make sure that we have fun um, and we do these things, uh, you know, and bring out the, the information. But for me, I want to have fun doing it, Mark. You know, it's great to see people having fun with us. I'm having fun with you as well. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we can get things out there. We can reach more people than a quarter of a million people. Or more than that, actually. It's 300-something thousand when you guys link in all of your, your your Facebooks and everything else and your other channels together. You know, we're going to get up into 2021. We will be able to reach half a million people through the connections that we've got at all different levels. And this is why it's important that we speak at all different levels, right from the top to the bottom to the middle of this industry, uh, and, and more importantly, to outside this industry so that we can get more people inside this industry. Absolutely right. Well, I, I, I think before we, we we start having long walks in the forest holding hands, um, I think we'll 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 sign it off here. Um, Peter, it's been a pleasure as always. Uh, really appreciate your your input. Um, invaluable as ever. Um, you're a man with a finger on the pulse. Um, so if anybody wants to get more of that sort of thing, um, head on over to Peter's. Well, his LinkedIn page, because everything stems back to there. Uh, his podcast will keep many a long drive. Very, very interesting indeed. Uh, it, it is a real learning exercise. Um, but on that basis, I'm going to declare this episode of Diggers and Dozers live over and done. Uh, Peter and I will be back in the new year with a new construction collective show, which builds on what we were just saying. But we hope you can all find time to join us here this time next week for the big... Big Fat Plant Quiz. I should have come up with a shorter title. The Big Fat Plant Quiz of the Year 2020. But until then, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. That'll do us. Thanks, everyone, for watching.